Evening baggers, I can't believe how quick these weeks are coming around. Thanks for logging on tonight, really appreciate it, it's great to see everybody. There haven't been many videos this, this month, I do apologise for that, it's been an incredibly busy week. Not through producing videos, but through preparing for a big event that I'm fishing next week. But first, I've got a few questions, what you guys have asked, so best place I can answer those for you is going to be in the tap room, so let's head over to that other corner, and I'll go and answer these questions for you. Most of the questions I've been asked this week have just really been about bait and tattle and that sort of stuff so it just makes sense to do it from this corner of the tattle room. The first question I've been asked, I talk a lot about measuring bait out, measuring ground bait and that sort of thing and what a lot of people don't realise is that a lot of the kit we already carry has already got measure, measurements on them like a lot of the bait tubs and that sort of thing. We have to use under international rules is the um, bait measuring tubs like these ones, these are obviously the matrix ones, there are different ones on the market by different brands I'm sure you've seen these before, these are the official bait measuring tubs, these are all marked up on the bottom that's marked up with a big number one because it's one litre exactly and each one's got its own measure, things like that are great to carry with you obviously the practical items for carrying your bait as well but it's a great way of measuring out your bait, another way is bait tubs like these what we have this one for example, a lot of people don't realise that on the underside of them it's actually marked up what the actual volume is of each one. So this one for example is two pints. So you know you could use that if you're measuring out ground bait, just use your bait box as a measure. And you've already got these on you so you're not having to carry any extra kit. Another question I've been asked is really just about how I carry a lot of my kit as regards you know the drawers and the, the seat box that I use. As all of you know I'm mainly predominantly a feeder angler so that means the amount of kit that I carry is really quite minimal. As regards the draw for my box I don't really carry a base unit. The only time I carry a base unit like this is if I'm pole fishing because I'll have all my pole kit in that and that obviously slides underneath my seat, main seat box. It clips into, into the frame just above the foot plate. But when I'm not pole fishing, obviously mainly I'm feeder fishing, I only need one drawer, one shallow drawer and that carries all the bits and bobs that I need. I'm just putting some trays together now for a match that I've got coming up next week and that's all I need to carry, one shallow drawer like that and I know a lot of you are going to be interested to see what's in here. All that is, you can probably tell, I don't know where you get these boxes from, I don't know who they're made by, there's no name on them, but basically I've got one there with a selection of bombs in, a selection of stots and then at, right at the end some baiting needles that's all I need to carry in that one and that one is again a selection of bombs because obviously I'm feeder fishing and you, obviously if you're gonna fish snaggy venues you need to have some spares with you and different weights as well one thing a lot of people don't realize is that it's all right carrying a selection of bombs that are say an ounce in weight but if you want to you know clip up or find a range that's much further out at 60 70 80 meters away you obviously need a heavier bomb to do that so that's why I carry some heavier bombs in that box that one is all bombs and at the end there are some sticky clip-on leads that are brilliant just for adding a little bit of extra weight to your feeders in the other side of the tray two pairs of scissors I like to double up on everything just in case you lose one or it drops them in the water or whatever couple of pairs of scissors, two hook tyres, couple of disgorgers, some style pliers that are from about 1982 and a bander for the pellets. Then I've got two other small tubs like this, one there, one there, one has got all my attachments in like the swivels and um, baiting stops and that sort of thing to just show you a variety in there, just nice little bits of accessories, bit of terminal kit and in this one swivels again and I've got some I only use homemade feeder links and that's what's in that one some feeder links and some swivels and then at the end as you can see the good old faithful stopwatch and a selection of lines that are very very rarely used because I just about all the time use ready tied hook lengths ones that are tied up at home or ones that you know I've already got from matrix my hook lengths in case you're wondering how I carry them are all in one of these I've got a couple I'm just making one up now for a for an event I'm fishing next week so all my hook lengths are in there and that is carried in my carry-all so I only need that one shallow nice neat tidy drawer I've been asked quite a lot about how I store feeders and things at home 
I've got two different little systems really for how I store my feeders at home. I, I don't obviously keep all my feeders out because you know obviously over the years we've accumulated a lot of feeders especially if you're buying them in bulk or in trade packs you tend to accumulate a lot of feeders. I've got some that are up there in deep storage I don't really go into there very often that's just kind of a, a backup stock if you want to call it that. The main stock that I come to if I'm going to make a box up or get some ready for the weekend is behind me in those tubs. As you can see everything's labelled up. The great thing about boxes like this is that they're clear. So even though yes obviously I've labelled them up they're clear anyway so you can see quickly and easily what's in there. And this is just like an immediate stock that if I've got to come in into the tackle room and just kind of make a box up or select a few for a match that I've got coming up at the weekend I can go straight to whichever box it is and find the right ones that I need. Another little tip just to speed that process up even further, I mean these are obviously the matrix feeders, they're marked up, I don't know if the camera's going to focus on that for you, but they're marked up very very clearly what each one of these weighs which is great, but I like to speed that process up even further, especially when I'm on the bank as well quickly changing feeders, I just take a few seconds out just to write on each one what the weight is and that speeds that process up even more. So I can come into the tackle room, find the feeders that I need, I've got spare boxes here if I need to make a box up, if I've got an event coming up and I want to put a new box together I can just go straight to the box there, I've got another one over here so I can quickly go to that, go to the feeders that I need, pack that away, put that in my carry all and then that's ready for the match and then after the match don't forget bring that back, pop it back there after you've put the feeders back in there and then it's all ready to go for next time. And the last question really was just about how I store ground baits and pellets at home. I don't keep a big stock of baits at home. A, it obviously takes up a lot of room. B, I have two little storage places. One is here in the tackle room. The other one is I have a small box of bait in my van for emergencies. Lo lots of times we go to venues and we might need a ground bait that we didn't realise we were going to need or you end up on a slightly different peg or a different venue or whatever. You sometimes need an emergency supply. In that supply which is in the back of the van that I'll not take you out there to show you but in there is just a box that's just got a bit of selection of cereal mixes, a selection of fish meal mixes, it's got a few feed pellets in there as well and some corn. Baits like that, especially corn are great to have in your van, they're in tins anyway so they're not going to go off so you can just keep it there just in case you need it. It's been a, a lifesaver on a couple of occasions and that's you know that's when it really really counts and it just makes you a lot more prepared for any eventuality that you might come across. As regards ground bait, I keep them in here, like I said I don't store a lot, I don't know if the camera's going to let me do this, let's try. My ground baits are stored in boxes like these, these are 64 litre boxes, I think I got them from Staples, not too expensive at all, they're nice and clear so you can see what's in them, and my system is, the bottom box is all cereal mixes and that sort of thing, and the top box, which is the most popular one that I use, are all my fish meal mixes, nice and simple, as regards pellets. Pellets are stored in just nice little tubs like these. Top one is for hookers, boilies, um, pump pellets, all hook pellets. Next one down is feed pellets. That needs stocking up actually. There's some four millies in there though, they're all the hard pellets and my um, two mil carp and coarse pellets. Six mil and eight mil pellets. Next one down is for fish meal. I've got some fish meal in there. Some pure fish meal that I use quite a lot of during the summer months. Some corn, some meat. And in the bottom one is all my um, continental and international rules gear like the measuring tubs and, and, and the bloodworm boxes and that sort of stuff. So nice and simple, come, come straight to it, no messing about, go straight to what I need and then I'm on my way. I know a lot of you have asked about the tattle room and just kind of how I manage obviously around my full time job and I'm just trying to make sure I'm prepared for events. Just being organised like this, you don't need a massive amount of space, you know, as long as you keep everything nice and efficient. Little systems work really really well for me, if ever I order a new rod or a new reel and, and add that to my stock, when I do that I put it on a nice little checklist so that any stage of any evening if I'm sat preparing for a match or deciding what kit I'm going to need to prepare throughout that week, I've got a list of exactly what I've got, I know exactly how many 4,000 reels I've got, how many 5,000 reels I've got, how many spools I've got, what rods I've got, what permutations of, of the weight of the rod and the length, and just things like that, that it takes a matter of seconds when you get that bit of kit and you introduce it into your tattle store, if you want to call it that, 
just put it on a nice little sheet and that is always there so that if you're sat at work and you're having your lunch or you're sat watching TV one night and something pops into your head you can just pick that up you know what you've got and that's it it just means everything's a lot more organized and it's going to help you enjoy your fishing a lot more and make sure you're a lot more prepared because come on let's face it there aren't any easy matches out there well hopefully that has just been a bit of an insight to some of you that have been asking about the tattle and just kind of how I manage my tattle and preparation and that sort of thing for big matches. Well it's been an incredibly busy week. I didn't have any match on last weekend, it actually got called off. I was coaching on Saturday and then on Sunday I was due to be at Larford Lakes. I was going to be using it as a bit of a recce for the upcoming Golden Rod final which is only about three or four, well three weeks away I think. Um, and just due to the lack of numbers, just basically because most people were on the other goldenrod qualifier at Boston it just meant numbers were a little bit low so we decided not to make that 125 mile journey down to Larford to have a recce for that which was a bit of a shame but that gave me a great opportunity to focus on some things that I've been working on here at home so with no match to report on for you this is just kind of a check-in more than anything else a lot of faithful subscribers have, have said to me on numerous occasions look even if you don't fish a match Jay just please just check in with us let us know what you're up to let us know what you're working on I think most people realize that if I'm not in a match I'm obviously working on something else so it's been a week where I've spent a lot of time on this so lots of exciting plans for the channel I've got a big event to fish next week and so a lot of preparation has been going into that because it's kind of it's a different style of fishing the kit that I'm going to be using is slightly different and I wanted to make it you know make my decisions right I've done quite a bit of research I've spoke to some very helpful um, top anglers who have helped me out with some information so hopefully I've made the right tattle choices but you'll be getting to hear all about that especially as I'm filming the whole event so that is definitely one that you'll be looking forward to Another reason why I've been spending a lot of time on here this week is because we're only about 10 days or two weeks away from the launch of the Catch Fishing Channel store. A lot of people have asked me about merchandise and this has really just come about because about two weeks ago someone saw me on the bank using a casting mat. The casting mat that I was using is one that's um, it's copyrighted to this channel and a couple of people have asked me where they can get a hold of them. So, the actual, one of the finished ones arrived today. A lot of you probably don't even use casting mats and it's just one of those products that you might you know it's like a, it's like a 13 or a 14 foot long range rod it might be something that you don't use very often but when you do use it it can make a massive impact to your fishing it's obviously branded up there we go i'm going to be using this next week you'll see why when you see the venue but these are going to be readily available within the next two weeks through the new store and the store is also going to be having the facility to book coaching sessions through as well. I've really struggled getting coaching sessions in just around my job and finding free dates. The website and the store is gonna allow you to do that. So rather than just get in touch with me, see what dates I've got available, you'll be able to log on to the store. This first bit of merchandise will be available in a couple of weeks time, as well as other things that will be rolling out over the course of the year. But it will also allow you to have a look at all the dates that are available for coaching and just click and you can pay for them there and then and then it's all done and dusted and then you can liaise with me as regards the venue and the style of fishing and all that sort of stuff so it's been a very busy week another exciting twist for the channel but it's all because of you guys for supporting it and i can't thank you enough for that thanks for logging on tonight like i say i didn't have a match last week but it's just a bit of a touch base with you because i know a lot of you really appreciate me doing this tomorrow friday i'm going to be leaving work at six o'clock and then i'm going to be racing over the pennines over to manchester and then the weekend is going to be all about the northern angling show i know a lot of you are going to be there and really looking forward to seeing you there and showing you some of the tattle that we've got on display on the matrix stand i'm there saturday and sunday bait tech are going to be there as well so please pop over to see them Haley and, and the crew will be over there they'll be doing bait demonstrations they'll have a lot of the new mixes already mixed up there for you to have a smell and just kind of play around with and just chat to the sponsored anglers there and it's great just to talk fishing so please if you think of going and you haven't got tickets I'll put the link below for you to the Northern Angling Show website where you can get tickets in advance so it's all about Manchester this weekend that's it, I'm not going to ramble too much, really appreciate you logging on, 
thanks to the new subscribers that are joined again this week and loads of twists and turns coming and a lot more fishing coming as soon as I get a chance to get on the bank. Thanks for watching, have a fantastic weekend. Hope to see some of you at Manchester. If not, I'll see you in a few more days when uh, I'll next upload for you. Have a great weekend. <laughs>